What's up guys? Mike here, hanging out in the mushroom farm. We've got a bunch of LC and we're gonna inoculate some grain spawn with some liquid culture here. I'm just gonna show you guys kind of my protocol, how I go about inoculating myco bags, like a five pound bag full of grain that I just sterilized with a liquid culture, okay? Now, I've got 12 different types of liquid culture here. I've got some 10 cc syringes and I also have some 20 cc syringes. And I just want to say, it really doesn't matter ultimately what size syringe you're going to use. I just kind of have these loaded up in these specific syringes, so that's what I'm going to use today. I do want to say, you want to use about a minimum of 5 cc's, okay, per bag. So this is a 10 cc syringe, so you would want to use at least half of this syringe of liquid culture, okay. Now these 20 cc syringes, okay, pretty big, right? These things can do four bags of, of grain, okay? Or you could just do, I'm gonna shoot like just one into one though, just because I've got all different strains right here and I just wanna kinda get them all on the grain I got and just get some mycelium running. But my basic procedure, you're gonna see me, I'm gonna take one of these needles here, okay? I'll take it out of the pack, I'll uncap the syringe, I'll put the new needle on the syringe, I will still flame sterilize it just to be sure that we're completely sterile here. I will in, I will open up this bag in front of my flow hood right here, and then I will inject the entire syringe into my bag that I'm working with. Okay, so that's the protocol we're going to be doing today. Uh, oh, and then we and then we seal them, of course, and then shake them. All right, but I'm going to show everyone how we do that. But anyway, that's the protocol we're doing today. Are you guys ready? Let's get it. All right, everyone. So here's the grain spun that we're going to be working with. These are oat grain spawn bags that I just recently sterilized. I did a video on how to make a simple grain spawn recipe. Now I'm going to link that in the description box below, as well as a no prep method involving millet and vermiculite. The millet and vermiculite is personally my favorite, but I'm going to link a couple of them down there for you. Now those are our liquid cultures, okay? So that's what we're going to be using to inoculate the grain spawn with today. I make all the liquid cultures myself at the farm here, so if any of you guys would like to purchase some liquid cultures so you guys could grow your own mushrooms, just be sure to check my website out, and I've got that linked down in the description box below. But anyway, like I said, we're going to get on to inoculating these bags of grain spawn. Okay, now I'm just going to kind of talk to you guys and voice over what I'm doing right here. And uh, we're going to do a couple bags together. So right now, I've got my flow hood on, and I just took the cap off my syringe there. And now I'm taking out one of those sterile needles, and I'm going to put it on top of the syringe, all right? We're going to use that to inject the bag there. And I just open up the tops of the bags, okay? So I don't have injection ports on these bags, and you'll see me do that. Right now what I'm doing is I'm flame sterilizing the needle. And I know that's not entirely necessary, and the needles should be pre-sterilized, but I kind of have an OCD habit of doing it, and I just like to make sure, since I've taken all the work already to get to this point. But anyway, now I open the bag in front of the flow hood. We're working with sterile grain here, remember? I'm just going to squirt that culture all over the grain there. Now we're going to go ahead, we're going to get rid of that needle. I like to open up the gussets on the grain bags. Look at that, you see how I've got the gussets actually opened up and pulled out? Now I kind of lay it over on its side, and I'm going to seal it with my impulse sealer there. And this is a magnetic impulse sealer. I've kind of talked about this in other videos, but I am going to do specific videos on that impulse sealer. But it's sealing right now. with It's got, it's got a little magnetic latching me uh, locking mechanism. And there you just saw it kind of popped up. Now what I'm doing right there, I'm pressure testing the bag. I'm making sure I don't have any leaks, I'm making sure I have a good seal on the bag. Everything checked out okay. So now what I'm doing is I'm just labeling the bag with the type of culture that I injected it with. And then after we label it, you'll see me, what I do is I shake the bag, okay? And I shake it just to get all that liquid culture completely distributed all over that grain spawn in there. And that way we get nice, even colonization and fast colonization. And I shake this bag quite a bit right here, but I won't touch it again, okay? So my kind of protocol is... So my basic protocol is right after I inoculate that bag, I seal it, I label it, and then I shake it, okay? That's pretty much it, and then it gets put on the shelf, and I don't touch it again. So it will not get touched again until it's ready to be either put into refrigeration and like stored, or we're going to just go ahead and spawn it. A lot of times I just spawn it. I usually don't refrigerate my grain unless 
I've got something going on and I can't get to it right away. But anyway, we're going to do a couple more bags together here and we're just going to kind of talk about a few of the different things I do and just a few tips. So just a few tips as far as like inoculating spawn bags and working in front of the flow hood, working with spawn. Always make sure you try to keep your spawn in the path of clean air or as close to that flow hood as you can. You also want to make sure that you're not going to accidentally put something dirty or something that might cause a contaminant to blow into the clean thing you're working in. So always remember to keep a path of clean air over whatever you're working with, okay? So that's pretty important. As you can always see, I've always got the flow hood blowing clean air over my spawn bag. And then another tip too is whenever you got needles or sharp stuff, try to either cap them or throw them away or do something with them right away just so you don't end up poking the bag or poking yourself or anything like that. I really like opening those gussets up, like I said. I think that's a good tip there. And these magnetic sealers, I, re I really enjoy my ma magnetic sealer. And I'm going to do, like I said, a specific videos just on the sealers so we can talk even more about them. And I've got some older, cheaper ones, too, that I used to use that worked absolutely great for the process. And I want to say, too, even as far as markers, now that I'm writing on that thing, you can get, if you, if you have wet spawn bags, like maybe if you've just pressure cooked them or something like that, and there's a little water residue on them. You can get one of those wet markers and that can actually help you sometimes, I've noticed, right on the filters. Also, when you're writing on the filters, be careful not to punch through those filters. They're pretty delicate and you actually can break right through the filters. All right, everyone. So that was the basic way that I like to inoculate my grain spawn with liquid culture. Like I said, I just go ahead, I open up the top of the bags, make sure I'm in front of the flow head here, squirt the liquid culture on there, seal the bags, shake them, label them, shelve them, don't touch them until you're ready to use them. Okay, so that's the basic protocol on how I like to inoculate my spawn bags and just kind of make my spawn bags. If anyone wants recipes on how to actually make grain spawn, I'm going to link down several recipes in the description box below, so check those out. I want to say too, I'll also have my website down there in case anybody needs liquid cultures or would like to purchase some liquid cultures. And uh, also, if you have any questions on this video or anything I went over today, just put that down in the comment section below and I'll be sure to address those. But hopefully everyone found this video helpful and informative. And if you did, please drop this video a like. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. But that's all I got for you on this one. And I will catch you guys on the next one.